The Middle Ages are described in books as a time of religiosity and boundless beliefs in God. Hell and heaven did not exist only in people's minds, and religion prescribed unconditional observance of fasts and canons. The most important prohibition was the display of lust and sexuality for all believers. The punishment for those who disobeyed was most severe. Premarital relations were severely condemned in all countries, and marriage and marriage imposed obligations. The husband had to be faithful to the spouse with whom he was getting married, and nudity was taboo for women. Lovemaking was only for the continuation of the family or for the satisfaction of the spouse, and then in silence and in a shirt covering the body. But it is difficult to stop a man, much less impose a ban on unreasonable actions, if he obeys his desires and instincts. In secular society, children born out of wedlock were born time and again, and the number of relationships of noble ladies and husbands exceeded a hundred. More interesting games took place behind the high walls of the monasteries, where the wives of Christ did not deny themselves in pleasures and entertain themselves as they could, brightening up their gray everyday life. The house of God was founded in the 12th century, and since then the sinfulness of the wives has been constant. Girls were taken as nuns from the age of 12 and raised as ladies-in-waiting, punished for misdemeanors by starvation, often locked in closets or barns. The abbess was Catherine Wells, who feared nothing, led a dissolute lifestyle, and even had a child with the priest. The monastery accepted all willing men who had money. The services of the wives of the Lord were not expensive. Mostly virgins were in demand among wealthy visitors. The more experienced nuns served the village men for a pittance, drank wine, and sang songs with them. The religious commandments were broken daily, and no God's punishment frightened either the priest or his girlfriend, the abbess. When the rumors reached the bishop, the monastery had already become a brothel and was simply dispersed. Later, several dozen skeletons were discovered during the excavation of underground passages. Barely born babies were apparently laid on the stone floor of the crypt. In the above ground part of the monastery, three bodies were found, most likely a priest, a prioress, and their child. This kind of sinfulness was present in many monasteries. There were different women who became nuns, some were not married, others were not married for fear of death and childbirth, others were punished by their parents for adultery or for having relations with a man of lower status. Often love letters of nuns were found in the cells, some managed to get pregnant even in the monastery, they were expelled, and the child was sent to a boarding school. There were cases of nuns faking their deaths and running away with their lovers. Such nuns were wanted and severely punished. Many convents sold beautiful chaste girls into slavery. They were transported abroad, and the date and cause of death were recorded in the books of the abbess. In some monasteries, girls were specially kept for the entertainment of rich men, and children were born from the liaisons. The authorities fought as best they could. Abesses were walled up, priests were executed, guards were posted outside the monasteries, but the debauchery did not stop. It was not uncommon to find revealing clothing, comfort toys, and even specially arranged rooms in the cells. Professor historian Sarah Rise Jones, studying medieval documents, has concluded that the idea of chastity and sanctity of nuns in the Middle Ages is very false. In the monasteries there were free morals, and often noble maidens did not renounce worldly pleasures at all. In order to preserve the morality of nuns, the church authorities invented many punishments, but fear did not keep the wives of the Lord from sin and debauchery. If you liked the video, then don't forget to put a like and subscribe to the channel, there will be a lot of interesting, shocking, and exciting things ahead.